Hi everyone, it's Tao and I'm back with another one. I did a video a week ago explaining why I switched from the stock Samsung keyboard to Google's Gboard. I asked you all what keyboard you were rocking on your phone and SwiftKey was mentioned a lot in the comment section. Since I'm new to the custom keyboard game and being the curious person that I am, you know I had to check it out. I covered Gboard in a video so I thought it was only fair to show SwiftKey some love. I did a little research and turns out SwiftKey was bought by Microsoft in 2016 for a solid $250 million. I've been using SwiftKey as my primary keyboard on my S9 for about a week now. Today's video is all about the features that make it an excellent keyboard. Is it better than Gboard? Which keyboard am I sticking with moving forward? Let's answer those questions right now. Let's go. When it comes to themes, SwiftKey has one of the largest selections hands down. The theme gallery seems to go on forever and I can guarantee you that you will find one that suits your preference. If you want options or like to constantly change the color scheme of your keyboard, then look no further than SwiftKey. Layout options is another customization feature that SwiftKey absolutely nails. You can choose a normal layout, which is the default, a thumb layout, which splits the keyboard in half, or a compact layout for those of you who prefer one-handed typing. You can even enable a floating keyboard, which undocks it and allows you to drag the keyboard anywhere on the screen. SwiftKey has a built-in clipboard that allows you to copy text and save it for later use. Anything you copy gets automatically saved to the clipboard and stays there for one hour unless you choose to pin it. To access the clipboard, hit the plus and tap on the clipboard icon. Tapping on a copied text will paste it immediately. Clipboards can come in very handy if you're copying multiple things and pasting them in different locations. This makes the entire process much more efficient. Samsung actually has a built-in clipboard, which sort of makes the SwiftKey one irrelevant for me. Samsung's clipboard is easier to launch and works in conjunction with any keyboard. However, if you don't have a phone that has a native clipboard built in, SwiftKey's clipboard feature is definitely a standout. One of my favorite features with Gboard is cursor control using the spacebar. There's something so satisfying about using that gesture. SwiftKey handles cursor control with a row of arrow keys that you need to enable in the settings. You can use the arrow keys to move back and forth between letters. The up and down arrows came in very handy for those multiple line messages. I also found with a single line of text, you can quickly jump from the start or the end of a sentence utilizing the up and down arrows. When I initially enabled the arrow keys, it completely threw me off since the entire keyboard shifts upwards. I was constantly missing the keys due to muscle memory. After a while, I did get used to it and I have to say it functions quite well. I've always felt that predictive text is something that most keyboards get better with over time. When I first started using Gboard, its predictive text was fairly mediocre, but it improved the more I used it. Same thing with the stock Samsung keyboard. My experience with SwiftKey was actually quite different. The predictive text was very good from the moment that I installed it. This speaks volumes about the predictive text AI that SwiftKey uses. A couple of my friends who use SwiftKey mentioned that the predictive text is what keeps them from switching to another keyboard. It's just that good. Although most keyboards have the ability to support multiple languages, SwiftKey stands out because of its multi-language predictions. I was very impressed with its ability to predict words both in Vietnamese and French when I tested it out. For languages with the same alphabet, you just start typing and SwiftKey will provide you with suggestions for the language it thinks you're trying to type in. In essence, you don't really need to switch between language keyboards. If you do need to switch between languages, like for those with a different alphabet, it's as easy as swiping right or left on the spacebar. The takeaway here is if you type in multiple languages, do yourself a favor and download SwiftKey. There you have it, the features that make SwiftKey a very appealing keyboard for anyone looking to improve their phone typing experience. A cool tip I want to mention that I love about SwiftKey is the ability to swipe right on the period key to quickly insert a question mark. You can also swipe left to insert an exclamation mark. Not the intended way to use it, but it works flawlessly and it's super efficient. Circling back to the question that I posed at the beginning of this video, is it better than Gboard? I don't think it's necessarily better than Gboard. Um, that's obviously subjective, and it really relies on what features you value most. Get SwiftKey if you want slightly more accurate predictions, superior theming and layout options, as well as a very handy clipboard. Get Gboard if you want built-in search and translate. 
intuitive gesture for cursor control and backspacing, as well as material design to visually match your other Google apps. What keyboard am I sticking to moving forward? The short answer is I'm still undecided. I am leaning more towards Gboard due to its material design and gestures. If you're on the fence, do what I plan on doing. I'm keeping both keyboards on my phone and will rotate between them until one emerges to be the favorite. Drop me a like if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. As always, it's much appreciated. Now until the next one, peace. Bye.